What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and we finally get to bring you our review of the brand new Micro Draco 800mm from eFlight. And we're going to get started by clearing something up. There seems to be some confusion as to what determines an airplane is a micro versus an ultra micro when they seem to be extremely similar in size. And I think some folks would like a spreadsheet. <laughs> we're not going to get that technical, but we are going to clear that up for you. The idea behind Draco was to embrace the bigger flies better mantra by making a small sized, very detailed scale version of Draco as large as they possibly could so that it flies as well as it possibly can while keeping it under the 250 gram or 8.81 ounce legal limit for remote ID here in the state. So essentially get it as close to that as possible without going over it. And that's how Draco ended up being this size. So what's the difference in this and say the UMX Air Tractor, which is an ultra micro and they are very close, very similar in size. As you can see, obviously Draco is a bit bigger, but it isn't, doesn't seem significant when you look at it. Well, the difference is in two places that count weight and wing area. So Draco weighs 8.31 ounces with the 300 milliamp 3S Spectrum pack. With that same pack, the UMX Air Tractor weighs right at six ounces. Not quite six ounces, but very close. So it is significantly less weight than Draco. But when you take a look at the wing area, you'll notice in this overlay of the UMX Air Tractor that Draco has a lot more wing area per wing than the UMX Air Tractor to account for that extra weight and the actual larger size that it is. So, to sum it up, a Micro is an airplane that comes as close to the remote ID legal weight limit as possible. An Ultra Micro is anything under that weight by enough of an amount to be considered significant. Draco is very easy to assemble. There are two pieces, the fuse and the wing. There's a multi-connector socket on the wing, a multi-connector plug in the fuse. You simply plug those up and attach the wing with a single screw. Draco has a 31.1 inch wingspan. It's 19.49 inches long. Our example weighs 8.61 ounces ready to fly with the Spectrum 4S 300 milliamp pack. It has a 1412 1500 KB brushless motor, an array of linear servos, and is intended for 3 and 4S 300 milliamp packs. Micro Draco is sold as a bind and fly. It's compatible with Spectrum equipment. It's a six channel airplane out of the box. You have elevator, rudder with a steerable tail wheel, ailerons, flaps, throttle. It comes equipped with AS3X and optional safe select. You can use that six channel to flip between those two. Also, if you have a compatible spectrum transmitter, you get some smart telemetry. You'll have flight log information, minimum and maximum receiver and flight pack voltage, ESC minimum and maximum information, and on the fly ESC status. Draco is a convenient top loader. There's plenty of room in the battery bay for the largest packs in the recommended range. Quite possibly the greatest feature of Draco really is the name of the game for a model like this and that is scale fidelity and there is plenty of that. It starts with the paint job. It's fully painted. It has what appears to be every decal that the actual Draco had. Then of course you go down to the articulating simulated king shocks that move and you compress the wire gear. There's the LED lighting kit which is among the most impressive we've ever seen on an airplane this size. Among many other things, you've got the scale four bladed prop, the scale turboprop exhaust, you have panel line and rivet detail, corrugated control surfaces, the corrugation on the fuselage of a Wilga. You have little things like the steps, the handles to refuel Draco, all the antennas, the wingtip skids, even the aileron counterbalance weights are there. They didn't miss a trick on this little thing, and that in and of itself is its greatest feature. Setting Draco up is simple. The manual is a great place to start. It's written in the new format that makes setting up your transmitter very easy. Horizon is still recommending that you learn how to do that versus just downloading setups off the website. And we agree it's a good idea to know your way around your transmitter. 
When it comes to flying the airplane on the stock setup we did, we did deviate from that after we flew it the first time just a bit. Our full setup page is next so you can see everything that we did and duplicate our setup if you'd like to. Then we're going to go right into the flying. It's all there. 3S, 4S, stall test, aerobatics, and even a little bit of bush flying. So check this out. Enjoy the flying. We'll see you back here. We'll give you our final thoughts. That was our maiden takeoff. Here's our clean stall test. Drops the left wing. We repeated that a few times. This is the dirty stall test with full flaps and it doesn't drop a wing with full flaps, interestingly enough. And here's our maiden landing. Draco will get really slow on the lighter weight 3-cell 300 pack, and this will be a wide open throttle pass on 3S. I was very surprised when you take the time to really get slow flight established at just how slow Draco will fly. When it comes to inverted flight, very stable inverted and requires about as much elevator as you'd expect from a high wing, high lift airfoil. And as you can see, there's plenty of elevator left to push over. You have to really give it the beans on 3S to sustain a knife edge for very long, but it will do it.
There's plenty of power on 3S to do whatever kind of sport aerobatics you might want to do with Draco. This was at the end of our morning and I only had one 3S pack left. First time I tried hover with it, did really well. Very stable in a hover on 4 cell, it'll really be something. Takes just about everything you've got on 3S to do it. Draco still flies very slow, even with the heavier four-cell pack. There's a difference, but not much. When you press the throttle forward, however, there's a big difference on 4S. Vertical performance on 4S is as spectacular as you'd think it would be. This airplane's making over 200 watts per pound on 4-cell. That's 3D airplane power territory. I pretty much like to one-wheel anything I can, and Draco does it well. On 4S, you can sustain a knife edge as long as you want to do one. We're using the stock push rod placement on the control horns just to show you what the airplane can do out of the box. If you mechanically adjust for more elevator, it will tumble better. And as you can see here, when you put it in a cross control situation like a flat turn, it's still very stable.
just a little bit of bonus footage on 4S actually coaxed a knife edge circle out of this thing. We've got a little bit of micro bush flying for you here. We started out just utilizing the gravel in our field parking lot. Here we're playing around on a hill at a schoolyard. Grass on this hill is pretty tall for this time of year, and this is a pretty tight area. That's the nice thing about a bush plane this size. You can do this kind of thing pretty much anywhere. We tried this spot just because I wanted to see if I could follow the contour of the ditch, if you will, to land the plane. And now back to the hill, we've got Heidi in a different spot so we can give you a different perspective. A micro Draco is something that we've all been asking for for quite some time. Now it's here and it does not disappoint. It exceeded my expectations. First and foremost, I never expected an airplane this size to have that much scale fidelity. That is very much impressive. And then when I saw all those scale bits, I wondered if it would slow down well. It does. It slows down well on the 4-cell. You put the lighter 3-cell in there, it does even better. It has very docile stall characteristics with full flaps. We had a blast finding places to bush fly with this airplane, and I can't wait to get a bit more time on it and have more of an opportunity to do some more of that. It really flies slow well, and it just looks the part when you're bush flying. When it comes to aerobatics, that exceeded my expectations as well. Very aerobatic, tremendous power on 4-cell and very respectable power on 3-cell. It hovers well, actually hovered for us on a 3-cell. I didn't think to try it on 4-cell like we said in the narration. I can't wait to try it with some punch-out power. That's going to be fun to play with. Just a very impressive airplane from a flight performance perspective. Horizon says it's a skill level 2 airplane. We agree with that. If you are competent with the trainer, this would make a great second airplane. You should have no trouble handling Draco. And bear in mind, it has safe select if you need it. The price point 
is $199.99 and given what it is, all the detail it has and how well it flies, I think that's a more than fair price in today's market for an airplane that is this cool and can perform this well. So if you decide that you'd like to add one to your hangar, we'll put some links in the description where you can do just that. When you go through those links, it helps support our channel. So if you'd like to do that, we appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for us. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings. And you can bet at some point in the future, there's going to be a bush flying video featuring this little mini-me. Take it easy.